out with more. More. Good morning, Lisa. Hey guys, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. This is just such a special experience, and I, I'm so glad to share it with the audience. But uh, so the men and women on this flight served our country in its most vilified war, and most never even received a thank you for their service. But starting at an airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, that was about to change, and I went along for the ride. Take a look. It's a thank you to your service and your sacrifice to our nation. Today marks our 42nd honor flight, and we couldn't be more proud. But this honor flight is a bit different. All 107 service members on board are veterans of the Vietnam War. The Vietnam vets, they were treated so poorly when they came back. That should never have happened in this country. Um, our motto with Old Glory Honor Flight is it's never too late to say thank you. And that's why this is so important. All on board were excited for the trip of a lifetime to Washington, D.C., including a member of the American Airlines Old Glory Honor Flight crew. It warms my heart to be with my fellow veterans. Bruce Ferris served in Vietnam from 1969 to 1970 in the 101st Airborne Division. We all know uh, we didn't get all lot of pats on the back. Didn't get a lot of thank yous. Well, that's today that changes. And what a change. Instead of dirty looks, these veterans received cheers. A true welcome home. That was unbelievable. I was not expecting that at all. Even the little kids were welcoming us. When we first came home, no one treated us like we had done anything. And it, it's different now. It's amazing. John O'Connor Jr. served in the Navy during Vietnam. And despite his experience, he encouraged his daughter to serve her country as well. It's just amazing to see men this strong break down and cry because it, it means so much to them. It was a day full of emotion. But what made the 800-mile trip worth it was the ability to gaze upon the 58,318 names etched into the Vietnam War Memorial. This here is basically something that all of our Vietnam vets really deserve recognition. It means a lot because I, I lost some buddies in Vietnam and I'd like to look at their names. Medal of Honor recipient Gary Luttrell was one of them. Though a frequent volunteer on honor flights, this was his first with his brother and sisters in arms from Vietnam. When I look at those names, they're not names to me. Those are little 18, 19 year old faces. They come back to life temporarily uh, in my heart, my soul, my eyes. He's not the only one who saw more than a name on the wall. I've got a few friends on the wall here that I wasn't able to meet people I there, there's stories like that about everyone on this wall. You know, I don't know what to say. I just, I get too choked up. And it wasn't just the wall that caused tears to flow. Lorna House joined the Army as a nurse in 1967. She was one of over 265,000 women who served during Vietnam. Women were a part of the whole Vietnam experience, and none of us was drafted to go to war, we all volunteered. They finally got their own memorial in 1993. It is so amazing. It is just unbelievable. And the day of healing was far from over. Dear Mr. Graham, thank you for your service in the Vietnam War. Part of the Honor Flight's tradition is mail call, where veterans receive letters of thanks for their service. It feels great. These letters I got make my whole day. It's the best part of the trip. And thousands cheer their return back in Wisconsin, showing that it's never too late to say thank you and welcome home. So many Vietnam veterans uh, did not get a welcome home, and it seriously affected them um, emotionally and, and, and mentally. I'm so glad that uh, they, they've done something like this, where they where they actually honored us. And this is just amazing. Just absolutely incredible. One of the one of the best days of my life. The Seal Ribbon Honor Flight wouldn't have happened without the help of American Airlines. The whole crew on board the flight, including the pilots, were all volunteers. To learn more about the program, you can go to honorflight.org. Well, you know what? Better late than never. I, it was, I, I cannot express what an incredible day it was. It was just such an honor to be with them and to get to know their stories. Yeah. As you guys saw, Bruce, who was a flight attendant, who was also a Vietnam vet, he was so glad to be able to, to give back to his fellow Vietnam vets. Uh, Lorna House, who was a nurse, uh, standing in front of the, the Women's Memorial. It was just a, a really moving experience. 
and the man taking the piece of paper and etching his name, yeah, scratching and, it in, and, and finding their friends who didn't make it home on the wall. And you know, Chuck, who is a medic, he was particularly moved. Um, and I try to remind him, you saved so many people as well, because he was recalling the people that he wasn't able to save. Um, and so it was just, it was an incredible day to spend with them. I think the most important part of it was, you know, it was George Washington who said that the willingness for generations to serve is how we treat uh, the veterans before them. Right. And, uh, you know, along their lines. But, uh, and so I think it's really important to look back at these moments in history, especially with Vietnam veterans, and how poorly they were treated, and to make sure that or future veteran, uh, veterans or military men and women who are serving to treat right. them well and treat they're, them with respect. They're the reason why Iraq vets were welcomed home, even though it was a controversial war. And uh, thankfully, our country's learned a lot. I can't that. believe they, they weren't Vietnam welcomed vets. home. They didn't it have was, a choice. They fought was, for our country. It was the times. It was, yeah. it was a crazy yeah. time. It's it's a thank you very much. Thanks for Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to thank be part of Thank you to all of our veterans, yeah. most thank importantly. You.